Hello and welcome to the Friday, January 31st, 2020 edition of Tesla Daily, unofficial Tesla podcast. My name is Rob Maurer. Today we are mostly talking about the third row interview with Elon Musk, the second part of two. And we do have a couple other quick notes to get to as well. First things first though, Tesla stock on the day, a really, really strong performance considering the macro environment, finishing up 1.5% to $650.57. That compared to the NASDAQ down 1.6%. To me, this is obviously a bullish sign heading into next week. Plus the fact that we not only finished the day on a run, but that run also breaking through the $650 share price level, which could be a bit of a psychological barrier and also have an impact from the options market as well. With that $650 close on the day and on the month, Tesla is now up $232 for the month of January, a 56% increase from the $418 share price we had to end December. When things click, I guess they click pretty fast. Despite that, Kathy Wood, founder of ARK Invest, who are obviously very bullish on Tesla, said that, quote, we think it's incredibly undervalued, end quote, and that competition is, quote, failing miserably, end quote, at competing with Tesla something we've talked about at length as actually being a strong positive for Tesla over the last six months. ARK Invest late today, just about a half an hour ago or so, updated their research and price target for Tesla stock. They now have an expected value of Tesla shares in 2024 of $7,000. This is their base case. They say, quote, this projection is our base case for Tesla stock price in 2024 based on our probability matrix, end quote. They have a bear case of $1,500 and a bull case of $15,000. $15,000. That's in four years. Obviously, this would be heavily reliant on autonomy, but their highest no autonomy price target for 2024 is actually $3,400. And actually, now that I'm looking at it, I see that they have a golden goose scenario, which is even more bullish than their bullish scenario, which was again a $15,000 price target. Their golden goose scenario has a $22,000 price target for 2024. They describe this scenario by saying, quote, Tesla lowers costs, builds factories efficiently, and launches its autonomous network, end quote. I mean, those first two definitely seem highly likely. The big question there would be autonomy, obviously. Anyway, suffice to say, they are still extremely bullish on Tesla. I don't have time to get through the rest of the note today, so we'll probably have to go through that next week. I will put the link to that, though, in the show notes if you want to check it out. A couple other quick notes here. Obviously, this is Super Bowl weekend, and CNBC went out and asked a lot of different players in the Super Bowl their thoughts on Tesla. Unsurprisingly, a lot of positive commentary there with people talking about their teammates or themselves having Teslas. Pretty unsurprising, not all that noteworthy, but during Super Bowl week, there will be a lot of advertising for other automakers. So it was nice to see Tesla get a little bit of attention here. And as we see commercials for electric vehicles, I think that's just gonna drive more and more attention for Tesla as we talk about all the time. The other quick thing here is that Seth Weintraub, the owner of Electrek, recently had some time with the Porsche Taycan and they did a little bit of a review on it. But more interestingly than that, in the comment section on that review, he said, quote, Motor Trend is putting Elon's Plaid Model S against a Taycan next week, end quote. That is going to be extremely interesting, and I'm glad it's Motor Trend. It makes sense. Tesla and them have a close relationship, and they've given fair coverage to Tesla in the past, unlike something like Top Gear, for example. So definitely something that we need to be on the lookout for next week. All right, getting into the third row interview. If you didn't watch part one, I would recommend that, but... If two hours and 20 minutes or whatever it was is just too long, I would definitely recommend watching this one. This one's only an hour and 15 minutes, and it is more focused on present day than sort of the history that the first part was focused on. So a lot of interesting things discussed, but I'll hit sort of the highlights here for me. This part began with autonomy, with Elon saying, quote, there is quite a significant foundational rewrite in the Tesla autopilot system that's almost complete, end quote. And in response to asking what part, said, quote, instead of having planning, perception, image recognition, all being separate, they are being combined, end quote. Remember, this interview was recorded before the earnings call, where Elon talked a lot about them having a really solid foundation with Autopilot, and I believe this is part of what he's speaking about there, feeling very confident in the path that they're heading down. He described this by saying, quote, essentially the neural net is absorbing more and more of the problems beyond simply, if you see an image, is this a car or not? It's kind of, what do you do from that? 3D labeling is the next big thing, where the car can go through a scene with eight cameras and kind of paint a path, and then you can label that path in 3D. This is probably a two to three order of magnitude improvement in labeling efficiency and labeling accuracy. Two to three orders in labeling efficiency and significant improvement in labeling accuracy, end quote. Remember, this was the biggest takeaway that we had from Autonomy on the earnings call as well, where they had said that moving to video training with labeling would be roughly a three order magnitude improvement. 
and labeling efficiency. Beyond that, I'm probably ill-equipped to make any further commentary on that. We probably need to get one of our neural net or autonomy experts back on. Obviously, those labeling efficiency and accuracy improvements should be really helpful in the recognition step, which Elon has said is the biggest part of the battle, so that's really good to see. But I have more difficulty understanding where Elon says that instead of having planning perception, image recognition all being separate, they are being combined. So more to learn here, but again, the biggest thing to me is that Elon is very confident that that foundation is solid. He did point out that this is not Project Dojo that they had mentioned at Autonomy Day. That's more for training of the neural network, using hardware to accelerate that process. And they said they might have the first one at the end of this year, with Elon saying, quote, very likely next year, maybe this year, end quote. The next big thing for me was a discussion on batteries, specifically on battery modules. And while modules were an example here, this was really more of a design and organizational structure conversation, but some really interesting insights nonetheless on both batteries and the design process. So the way Tesla structures their batteries is there's the battery cell, those cells are then put into a battery module, and then those battery modules are then put into a battery pack, which is then put into the vehicle. And Elon talked about how they originally designed it that way with the module concept back in the early Roadster days, so that if any sort of battery failure were to occur, it wouldn't wipe the entire pack, they would be able to replace those individual modules. He then talked about how that design process had carried through to the Model S, then to Model X, and then to Model 3, but that by the time they got to Model 3, the modules were not actually swappable anymore. So then what's the point? Elon said, quote, we really want to move to no such thing as a module, it's just cells and pack, end quote. Based on how that quote is structured, my guess is that the Model Y still uses the modules, but that'll probably be the last vehicle that we see battery modules for. In terms of how this happened, Elon said that there's just a lot of inertia with these sorts of decisions they tend to carry through. And then he also mentioned the organizational structure. The organizational structure will reflect in the product structure. And because Tesla had a battery module team, that ended up being a part of the design. He said they have now since moved that to just a battery team, which should make a lot more sense. This is something we heard Elon talk about with Tim Dodd, Everyday Astronaut, probably a couple of months back, but emphasized this as being a really super important point because this is going to be an extremely difficult thing for other automakers to overcome because their organizational structures and their supply chains and things like that are so siloed. That's one of the nice things about having an amazing engineer like Elon Musk as your CEO. Next on my list was an interesting discussion around the difficulties of starting a new car company. Number one being that mass manufacturing is hard. We've heard Elon talk about that a lot. But number two here being that the other automakers make, according to Elon, more than 100% of their profits on the sale of parts for service. So they're selling the cars new at a loss, and then over time, they're then selling those parts to recover from that loss and eventually make a profit. This is much more important of a point than it may seem at first glance, because that means that any new entrants into the auto market have to not only compete with the massive, massive economies of scale that exist for the auto market today, they have to compete with vehicles leveraging those massive economies of scale that are also being sold at a loss. That makes an insanely difficult market to penetrate. That's a huge part of why startup automakers have consistently failed, and that's what Tesla has been up against the last decade. When we think about potential competitors for Tesla, well, Tesla is now at scale, so a new entrant is going to have to compete with Tesla's economies of scale. And while Tesla would never operate with that business model of selling a negative margin vehicle and then making it up with service, well, what Tesla can do is sell the hardware of their vehicle at cost or at a negative margin and make that up with software. And then even on the parts side, that's a tense situation for any new entrant. Tesla for years has had significant negative margin on service because all their vehicles have been under warranty. Tesla's finally now getting to the point where some of those vehicles are coming off of a warranty. So while the business model isn't going to rely on profit from the service arm, it will at least moving forward be less of a significant drain on profitability than it has been during these sort of startup years for Tesla. But any new entrant is going to have to go through that period of time if they want to have any hopes of competing. It's just an extremely tenuous position to be in. I think after considering some of these things a little bit more, my hopes for other EV startups are probably even a bit lower than they were before. You've got to differentiate somehow, but the further we go in time, the more difficult that's going to be to differentiate from Tesla. The next piece here that I think is also being underappreciated was the conversation around internationalization of Tesla's production and localization. Elon called this, quote, the biggest problem that we have to solve right now, end quote. There are just so many benefits here from labor to parts to logistics to even just timing of deliveries. Having local production means Tesla doesn't have to 
set up their factory to produce vehicles for Europe for a few weeks and then shift over to producing for China for a few weeks and then shift over again to producing for the US for a few weeks. They can just lock in on those configurations for the market that they're serving locally. That'll improve uptime, that'll improve margins, and it will reduce this end of quarter push that we always get every single quarter. That alone is a logistics nightmare, and I'm sure there are extra logistics costs for Tesla to ship those vehicles in an expedited manner to try to get as many deliveries within the quarter as they can. It can also create poor customer experiences, so there's just so many benefits here, and I think this will have a really big positive impact on margins. Tesla is looking for pennies literally through the entire chain, all the way from raw materials to final delivery and beyond even through service and ownership with mobile service and Tesla insurance that is meant to keep the total cost of ownership down and even autonomy that is meant to improve cost of ownership too by allowing your car to go out and make money for you. So raw materials all the way through end of life of the vehicle and then Tesla eventually will continue even beyond that as they enter into recycling. Man, I would not want to have to compete with that. Those were my big takeaways, but definitely check that interview out. Some nice discussion on some of the issues in 2018, Gigafactory Berlin, the design decisions for the Cybertruck, and a few other topics as well. As always, thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast. And I will see you next week for the Monday, February 3rd episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.